G'day folks, Ziggy D here, and in this video I want to give you a super straightforward and effective guide to loot filters in Last Epoch. Now you can get by when following a build guide by just using a filter that the guide creator supplies you with. That is fine. However, if you ever want to make your own builds, or refine things to be more effective for your character's current needs, then you need to know how to make and adjust filters on the go in this game. I would go so far as to say it's a fundamental and core skill of any player. Two important things are true in Last Epoch. Crafting is an integral part of gearing and gear drops identified. That means that you can and should be tailoring what gear you see and how it's displayed to help you find items to craft for your current build. Every build gets its own custom filter in this game. It's one of the game's biggest strengths and weaknesses at the same time, because while it's extremely powerful and modifiable at a moment's notice in-game, which is fantastic, the system can feel a bit overwhelming for newer players. I'm going to try and solve that here for you. Now Shift F opens the filter screen, and from here you can make a new filter with the plus button here, and name it something so that you know what build it's for. Here I'm working on a filter for my upcoming Acid Flask build. Now the rules in a filter go from highest priority at the top to lowest priority at the bottom. This means that anything above the lower rules will override the previous ones. This means you can do things like hide rare items, but highlight rare items that have very good affixes. So now we will learn on the go as I take you rule by rule on how to make a basic and fundamental filter that works for any build that you can customize to your build. To add a new rule, you'll click the plus button here, and that'll create an empty rule that we can then modify. The very first rule in the rule that goes right down the bottom for us will be to hide normal, magic, and rare items. Now, some people like to hide everything, but that does leave a little bit more room for error. If you're just starting out, I suggest just sticking with normal, magic, and rare items, and we'll build from there. To do this, we'll select add a condition, and then sort by rarity. And then in the rarity list over here, we will choose normal, magic, and rare items. Now there's a very brief moment at the start of the game where you might want to equip some white items like silver rings. So we'll make it so that this only kicks in at levels 5 through 100. So those first four levels do not hide anything. For that, we will check the character level dependency box just here, and we'll type in 5 to 100, which is max level. This is a helpful tool to use if you want rules to only kick in at higher levels, for example. Once we're done with any rule, we'll click the update button down here to lock it in. Note that rules can be enabled and disabled with a checkbox here. Currently it's a little buggy where you have to go in and press update to make that take effect. Hopefully that'll be fixed at launch. Now we don't actually want to hide every rare and magic item. So that's why we'll now build upon this hide rule to add rules that show the things we actually do want to see. Now remember we're going from lowest priority to highest priority, so we'll start with just showing basic affixes that are good for our build. To do that we'll create a new rule, and have it visibility show, and then our condition that we're going to be adding is to sort by affixes. For now we don't need the advanced options, as we're just starting out. So what we'll do is we'll select affix, and at least one of these affixes on the same item that we'll specify by selecting this list here. Now this is the part that will take maybe a couple of minutes, and probably the longest part of creating a filter. What you're going to do is check through every section here, and checkbox any affixes that are going to be good for your build. Some things are generally always true, like for example nearly every build wants vitality, so you're going to go ahead and check that. You're going to go ahead and check any other main scaling attributes that you may want, and if you're stacking a specific attribute you want to do that too. If you're playing a melee build or a spell casting build of a certain type, you may wish to get modifiers for those. This is a throwing build, so we'll go ahead and check all of the throwing affixes. And then you'll want to check any relevant damage types for this specific build. So this one is set up for a cold variant of this build. So we'll check cold and elemental, and anything that applies like cold penetration and elemental damage over time. If you're not sure yet which specific things you want, be more liberal with this rule and checkbox more things. Like for example, I'm not sure if I'm going crit or if I'm going damage over time, so I've selected all of them. And then once I decide that I don't want any of these, I'll just come back in and update this rule by disabling these ones. So if I decide I'm not going crit, I will drop crit multi and crit chance. That will reduce the clutter of the amount of items that we see. 
We'll also make sure to go through any relevant defensive actions. Usually all of the health ones are going to be checked. If you're going to be using a shield, you may wish to look at block. And then generally speaking, it's a good idea to checkbox all of the resistances. If you're a non-channeling build, you may not want the channeling one to reduce clutter though. One to keep an eye out for is the bottom potion one here. Ward and ailment cleansing on potion use is quite useful for any build because cleansing ailments is very handy. Another one that's useful for every build is critical strike avoidance, so it's a good idea to check those. Another example of that is movement speed, and often cooldown is used by most builds too. If you're having mana problems, you may want to check mana regeneration. If you're doing a specific ailment build, make sure to come in and select things like your specific ailments that you want, and any other debuffs you want to try and apply to enemies. Then you'll want to come down to your class here in class specific, and select your class. Now there's a pretty long list of affixes for each class. If you know what your build is going to be doing, what you can actually use is the search box here. So we know we're going to be playing Acid Flask, so I can type in Acid, and then I will get Increased Area with Acid Flask and Level of Acid Flask, and I can just check both of those. Again, if you're not sure what you want to be using yet, just be more liberal with the checkboxes because you can always come back and remove them later. So I may not know if dodge rating if hit recently is going to be good for me, but it's something that I could get. Or health gained on Clancing Blow, for example. I could get that and then simply drop it later if I find I'm never using it. If you're not very familiar with the options available to you to be able to use the search box, then you'll simply just want to go through the list and just select anything that looks good to you. We'll skip idols for now because we're making a separate rule for those. And I recommend just checkboxing all of the experimental affixes for now as well. Same deal with personal. These are unusual items that can show up on occasion, and it's a good idea just to show these. Once we've selected all of the affixes that are usable for our build, or theoretically usable, we'll click confirm. You'll see we have 70 affixes selected, and now what this rule is doing is showing any item with at least one of those 70 affixes. This is very good for leveling. As you can see though, at endgame, this is now showing a lot of rares that I probably don't want to use because these just have one, at least one tier of one of those affixes. So this filter is too cluttered. This is the main rule that you will probably come back and modify over time. There's a couple of ways of doing this. You can simply say, I want only items that have two of those affixes from the list, any two in combination. You can see that's automatically reduced the clutter there. And you can go further in three. Four is unlikely, but you could get even that restrictive if you want. So now I'm seeing Noble Gloves because it's got Area, Frailty, and Necrotic Resistance, three of the affixes on my list. But a lot of these other ones are being hidden. So that's one way and the simplest way. Another way is to use the advanced options here. And then you can make it so that you'll only see affixes from this list of more or equal than four tiers of that specific affix. So if I do this, you'll see that these Noble Gloves here have Tier 4 Necrotic Resistance down in the bottom right there. So these are showing up on the filter because they have at least one affix that is of at least Tier 4, nearly maximum tier. You could get even more restrictive if you wanted later to reduce clutter further, and you could say I only want to see Tier 5 of these affixes because I have pretty good gear at this point. As you can see, the Ivory Dice is showing because it has Tier 5 Cold Resistance. At some point, once your gearing gets really good and you're focusing just on exalted items and legendaries, then you may come back and fully disable this skill by checking the box there like that. We will now build upon this basic rule by adding a new one, and this one will be designed to show and highlight any chase affixes, the things we absolutely do not want to miss. An example of this is this exile coat, because I never want to miss plus one to acid flask affixes. This rule is usually for either using these items or even just picking them up and shattering them to get those affixes for crafting later. Because they're often quite rare, we, we never want to miss them. As such, you can show and emphasize, which capitalize it like that. I like a more subtle filter, so I go for just highlighting in this manner because that stands out from the other rares quite effectively, I think. I'm not going to miss that. But if you want to make it more obvious, you can instead go to recolor and choose a different color. So for example, I could make them pink. The thing I like about the show rule is it respects the item's original color aesthetic. So if it's a blue item, it'll still show up as blue. If it's a yellow or rare item, it'll still show up as yellow. If you use recolor, it will override that original color. Whereas emphasize just capitalizes it so you can still tell what the item is at a glance. Just a personal preference. So to do this, we will once again choose affix from the condition. And just at least one for this, because we want any item with at least one of these affixes. 
And then I will tell you a couple that are very good to keep an eye on for any build. Hybrid health is very rare and very valuable. You pretty much always want to include this on your filter, even if it's just shattering so that you have those affix shards for future builds. Early on, increased health is percentage health is a, is a little rare as well, so you could check that and then simply uncheck it later if it's showing up too often or if you already have too many of them. Another example of that that is fairly rare initially is critical strike avoidance. So getting a nice little bankroll of those is pretty helpful. You can come in and remove this one later. Another good example is movement speed. You might struggle to get enough movement speed affixes to craft good boots early on. You can come in and remove this once you have enough movement speed banked. And then you want any affixes that are just essential to your build. So for me, that's pretty much just level of acid flask. But you might decide that there's a few other things that are useful for you as well. Maybe smoke bomb is really important to your build, so you include that so you don't miss it. Very simple and straightforward rule, but essential to do. Now along that lines of essential things you don't want to miss, Exalted items are drop only, and they drop with at least tier 6 or tier 7 affixes. Usually only one, but very rarely you can see an exalted item with multiple exalted affixes, and also tier 7s themselves are quite rare as well. You can see this is an opal ring here with tier 7 physical resistance, which goes up to 75%. That caps you in a single affix. Obviously insanely good. These are very rare. So we're going to add a highlight for these. As these are quite rare, and I definitely do not want to miss either of them, we will use the recolor and emphasize for this. I make them red because nothing else is red, and they really stand out. Then we're going to use affix. Then we're going to go through the list and select literally everything, except idols. Idols don't matter for this. This is because any tier 7 affix could theoretically be useful to some build. Now in theory you may decide that you're probably never ever going to use like a reflect tier 7 exalted item. But the good news is here that these are very rare, so unless you're seeing a ton of these highlighted items, you don't really need to come in and disable much of this. The point is that tier 7s are rare enough that you want to see them when they do drop and you want to know that it's a tier 7, and this is probably not going to be cluttering your screen all that much. So once you've selected every affix, it's easier to just use this initial checkbox here instead of going through and checking each individual one. You will say, with at least one of these affixes, and then with the advanced options enabled, we go into tier of individual affixes must be more or equal to 7. So this means any one tier 7 affix will be recolored and highlighted, like this opal ring here. I'm going to pick that up. Potentially even rarer are items that have more than one exalted affix. For that we will do the same thing, recolor and emphasize, affixes, select all the affixes. Now an easier way to do this is actually just to duplicate this rule. So if you take your initial tier 7 one and just click the duplicate button, it'll create, it, create another identical rule and you can simply go through and change this one so you don't have to go ahead and reselect all of these boxes. We will then go tier 6 and we'll say at least two. So now this makes a rule that is highlighting any item with two or more tier six affixes. Again, these are rare, so you don't wanna miss them. I've only ever found a few of them. So the last thing we need to do is show and highlight good idols. For that, we'll add a new rule and we'll go in and show, and I just like to use emphasize for this once again. We'll select affixes and then we'll go down into, we're gonna make this in two separate rules. So we're going to start with the general idol rule. We're going to select anything that is either good for our build or just in general good. So for example, health, both types, physical resist, different resistances. You may decide armor is good for your build or dodge rating. Let's say we want damage over time for our damage over time build. So we may include that. For your crit build, we may want to include that. But then we're going to like leave a lot of these other things that aren't useful for us. Once you have chosen all of the general idol affixes that you like, you'll confirm, and then you'll say with at least two of these on the item. With this setup, we're not hiding any idols, we're just highlighting the good ones. So as you can see, this humble Eterran idol here has plus three vitality and poison resistance, an excellent generic idol for any build. So that's the sort of thing we want to know is good and there to pick up and equip. <laughs> the second idol rule that we're going to make is show and emphasize once again. And this one is for your class specific idols. 
So I'm going to go down into Rogue Idols and check the list for anything that looks good for my build. So it's a throwing build, we're using Acid Flask, so look for things for your specific skill or any sort of specific scalers. So maybe you're a bow build, you might want bow damage and bow crit, for example, and so on. Once you've selected all of your class specific things, you'll confirm that. And for this one, we'll do with at least one of these affixes on an item. Now, whenever a rogue idol drops with at least one of the affixes we desire, it'll just be capitalized so it'll stand out a little better. For example, I've tagged health gain on dodge, so here's this on a large shadow idol. Later on, you can come back and reduce clutter by updating this to two to only show your class idols with at least two of the affixes you desire. The reason I recommend starting with one is that's just a little bit restrictive and you want some halfway decent idols to begin with. Now if at some point you decide that idle clutter is a bit too much and you don't really want to see like these random ones with poison that you don't care about, then you can simply add a new rule to hide and then you can go to item type and hide idols. Once you've hidden all types of idols, you can drag this down to the bottom and you'll notice that our highlight rule still overrides that, right? Just the same as hiding normal magic and rare items. So we'll still see the good ones we've tagged, we just won't see the generic ones that we don't want to see. The only reason I don't suggest doing this from the outset is that you initially want to build up a little bit of a stash tab filled with idols that are good for different builds so you can sort through them. And there you have it folks, a very simple and straightforward and customizable loot filter that will work for any build. But more importantly, you've learned the steps to go through to make it and to be able to customize it. I will include a link to a base filter that you have to go through and edit. It will include these rules with descriptions, but it won't do anything for you until you add the affixes that your build specifically desires. At most, I will select some suggested affixes, like for example, hybrid health. So if you do this properly and learn how to modify on the fly, you're gonna have a much better time with the game. And I hope that this video has helped in that process. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.